If you think about education, it's all about qualifications. In other words, you go to secondary school to get the qualifications to take you to university, and hopefully you get into the best university you can get into, and it gives you an opportunity again to extend your, your learning opportunities. But the university at the end of the day is at the it has the ability to provide you, or if you're a capable student, for providing you with a degree. And if you really think what that degree is all about, obviously you've learned how to learn. That's the school process. But the degree qualifies you to go out into the world of employment, to gain a job, to gain a career, and to take it forward. So I would argue that assessment is more about, or today more about, lifelong learning and continued professional development than it is necessarily about changing the principle of getting a degree and getting that, that, that assessment at, at university level. So if you think about assessment, that you've left school, you've gone to get a job, hopefully you've qualified for a job, it's what you learn through that experience. It's how you continue to learn, continue to develop, continue to extend your experience, how you get accredited for that, whether it's by badging or some sort of accreditation process that allows you to differentiate yourself from someone who hasn't got that experience or hasn't been to that conference or hasn't read that book or hasn't had whatever the experience actually is. So the lifelong learning piece and the continual professional development piece is actually the most critical. The university has got you to the point where you can qualify for that. It is the continual professional development. So there's people of my generation, there's people who continue to learn within the environment, who need to be stretched within their own organisations. And that, for me, is much more disruptive and much more interesting than just particularly the accreditation or assessment that goes on within an institution. And what I mean by that is you've got formal learning where you want to achieve something, get some sort of accreditation or certificate, and that qualifies you for something else. So learning to code, for example, would be one of those examples. But there's many people, certainly my generation, who just want to continue to learn, continue to understand the best of whatever the vocational area it is, whether it's law, whether it's accountancy, whether it's banking. I mean, every profession, every single profession, architecture, Every profession has a learning curve, a continuous learning curve. So what you have now with digital is that continuation to grow, a continuation to express yourself. It is also interesting, and again it's something that is often forgotten about, is the continued relationship with the university. I mean, for example, you're, you're an alumni of a university. If you're an alumni of Oxford and Cambridge, that stays with you for all your life. So having a relationship with that university, a continued relationship, to be part of their alumni, to be part of that learning exercise and continue to learn with them, to have access to that continual development is something, a new ecosystem which is evolving and something which is really very, very interesting indeed. And that applies to not just the Oxford and Cambridge of this world, it applies to probably all adult education opportunities, both vocational and academic. Mm.